port of the computer. Recording. Okay. So, how's everyone doing this week? It's been a this is our second call of the new year, and I uh, just want to see how everybody's, how everybody's progressing so far. So, how's everything going for everybody? Pretty good on this end and yours. Yeah, we're, we're surviving it. It's been uh, non-stop, which is a good thing. It's not. I'm not complaining of any sort, but it's been non-stop. Um, just working on all kinds of stuff, updating all kinds of materials, and just trying to keep everything moving forward. So today's class is, uh, we're streaming this on Facebook through our uh, professional life insurance agent discussion group. Um, so we may have people pop in you may not recognize. Um, so just you know, be be yourself. Don't worry about anything. Just ask questions, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have a nice conversation. I expect a, a, a semi large class today uh, because of the Facebook event. So we'll we'll see what happens. But um, so this is an open Q and A group coaching discussion. Nothing is off the table. You know, feel free to ask any questions you have regarding business, products, companies, um, whatever questions you have that will help you grow your business. So whoever wants to start, whoever has a question, please jump in and ask. Jeremy, I have a question. Absolutely, go ahead. Um, I'm slowly getting into the IUL market and um, I'm looking at uh, Pen, Pen Mutual. Mm -hmm. I'm getting uh, verse in their product lines, but my target market has been like um, 55 and older. What would be the best outside of final expense to talk with them about, um, you know, adding to the retirement, um, uh, uh, what things that they can do in, a, in addition to what they may be receiving in about five to 10 years with Social Security? Um, I know it may be like a leap, a giant leap forward, or um, they don't have as much time as someone in their 30s or 40s mm -hmm. uh, to utilize an IUL. But what what can be done for that market? A lot, a tremendous, okay. tremendous amount. Final okay. expense is just one small piece of the life insurance market. Right, okay. very, very small piece. So for that 55 year old group, 55 plus. Um, life insurance conversations can be had about additional tax for retirement okay. and deferred years. So, for example, if I have someone who's 55 now that has money in their 401k, we may show how to spend on the 401k to let the IU will go to replace that income long term. So, need about 15 years to create income, okay. significant, you know, significant income. Okay. But we can do it in as little as 10 depending on the circumstances. So that's okay. one That's one piece. Um, another piece I use IUL whole life for is for income replacement okay. and pension maximization. So when one spouse passes, what happens to their social security? Uh, they have to choose between one or the other, right? Well, they, they usually keep the higher of the two. So right, okay, the higher. The, the, yeah, they, they lose the lower one. And depending on if, if they have pensions or not, there could be a, a pension play there where some of the newer pensions that are still around are, they have to elect survivor options. Some mm -hmm. people don't. So if they have a 0% survivorship, that pension disappears. If they have a 50% survivorship, their pension cuts in half. Right. So there's different conferences to be had on that topic just to help you know, plug in enough life insurance to replace or recover that income if something if or something more, when something bad does happen. Okay. All right. So there's two. Um, a third one would be a legacy play. You know, okay. if, they, if they have a good amount of assets, um, they don't need any any particular amount of income, more income in, in, in place, then mm -hmm. we could use life insurance. Typically, and this is something most people feel and talk about is a second to die life insurance contract that when both of them die, a large tax-free amount goes to their estate or to their heirs. Right. That can right. I answer the question. So there's three different three different ideas right there. It, it, it does answer because I was on a call with um, 
with Penn Mutual yesterday, where there was Congressman Moore, um, but the attorney that was there gave a lot of the um, uh, uh, situations that you just talked about, survivorship, um, and the taxation that goes into play and how we can create uh, a, a sort of a cushion to protect those um, those uh, inheritance options for survivors. Yeah, there's a lot of options there. Sorry, my phone's in the background here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, but I mean, I, I was talking to Eric. Uh, we had a... a my wife's in South Carolina dealing with a family emergency. And I've been, I, I think it was Thursday or Friday, me and Eric talked for what, but an hour and a half, two hours, Eric, um, about a lot of different topics, just doing some coaching. And we talked about second life insurance because most agents don't really exist anymore or what it is. A second life policy is a phenomenal tool. If you have clients that don't need a lot of income, that don't need life protection for themselves, for each other, for income replacement, a second die for legacy can be huge. Yeah. And the best part about a second die policy is it's written on the lives of two people. It's a lot less costly than a traditional policy. Yeah, and that's true. And if so, if one of the one of the people is sick or unhealthy, they can still get the coverage. So it's one of those things that a lot of people don't know about. Not a lot of carriers have them anymore, mm -hmm. but a properly positioned second to die policy, especially in the estate planning trust markets can be huge. Yeah. You know, we all want to, you know, I have agents that want to create trust fund babies. And I'm all for that. I, I love selling a lot of life interest to, to fund a trust to give, you know, to make a bunch of rich brats in the future. That's what I look forward to. Um, that's what my kids look forward to. <laughs> as being those trust fund babies when they when, when i when i go finally um but a second to die it, it, it can create so much additional wealth for a family transitional wealth legacy wealth that they wouldn't have elsewise because we leave money in our iras our 401ks our our you know all these different qualified vehicles we have to spend it over 10 years now so the stretch ira that we used to build legacy wealth off of is gone so life insurance is the new stretch IRA, for lack of a better term. It's a way to create generational wealth for pennies on the dollar. Not to mention that um, when a person dies, that uh, benefit is usually taxed between 20 to 30 percent mm -hmm. when it's in those qualified plans. Oh yeah, whatever that income, whatever that income bracket is. Anywhere from ten to thirty nine and a half percent, and it's in. If you look at the you know positioning for long term, you know we have, we always talk about the question every class. Talk, I ask the question, you know, based on the way the government's spending money, hand over fist, we think taxes will be higher or lower in the future. And if taxes are going to, you know, we're already seeing the tax the taxes going to be re reverting from the Trump tax cuts, which means an increase. But now, looking at what the way the government is spending money, and I'm not—I don't care about politics aside. Both sides spend tons of money they don't need to spend. You know, ten thousand dollar hammers, twenty thousand dollar toilet seats, all add up. I don't care what how the how what side of the aisle you're on, right? So if that's the case, if the government keeps spending money hand over fist, who's going to be responsible for that bill long term? Who's going to have to pay that balance? Mm -hmm. And it's going to—it's going to fall to us. Yep. And when that falls to us, I mean, if you look at, I think it's debtclock.org, there's a tax per capita on there. All right. So tax per capita means tax, tax per every man, woman, child on the face on, in the United States. Right. So if, if, if we, if we want to pay off the debt, which is now what 30, as of December 29th, $37 trillion, we have to pay, and this is a, I have looked at a couple of years. $250,000 per person in this country to pay off that debt. Every man, woman, and children. All right. If that's the case, how many people want to write that check? How many kids can afford to write that check? None of us. They create it. it we're in a very delicate tax situation as a, as a country. You know, we're this close to defaulting on our tax, on our, on our debt. It's, it's increasing 
tre by tremendous amounts every single day. And it's going to fall to us to, to, to pay off eventually. And it's going to hurt. Jeremy, yes. uh, before you go on to another topic, you're talking about the second to die policies. Mm -hmm. Who sells them? Because uh, I, I'm kind of all the companies we deal with, not one of them offers a second to die, you know? Hmm. They're, 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 they're few and far between now. National I mean, Life has it. National Life has one, I believe. Yeah. And Mutual do. has one. Midland had an index second to die up until like three years ago. I think Mutual Omaha has one. Um, I want to say Mass Mutual has one. It's a, it'd be a second to die whole life. That's still a phenomenal tool. Um, but again, you call your local, your, 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 your best IMO and ask them which companies have them because they're going to, they are few and far between. And you'll be surprised how many FMOs don't even know they exist. It's a funny call, conversation to have. Um, I was talking to one of my IMOs and they hired a new kid. I mean, he must have been maybe 30, 35 years old. Now, he's younger than me, so he's a kid. And I asked for a second to die policy. He goes, Jeremy, what's what's the second to die? What's the second to die policy? I'm like, okay, Alex, we need to have a conversation. Um, and you're you're the product specialist for an IMO. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> I love this kid to death. He, he's trying so hard, but he has no clue what's going on. Um, so eventually, we, we I gave him a, a brief class. We got on Zoom. We did a web class, we did a web share, and I showed him how Second to Die works and and why it's beneficial. And his question to me was, "Why don't more agents sell this?" I said, "That's a great question. I don't know because it is a phenomenal tool." And it's probably one of the most un underutilized tools of in our toolbox. Well, you should have suggested that more people don't sell them because people like you who help people like us don't know about them. Yeah, and that, I think that was probably said during the conversation. But again, you know, it, it, when the, when the IMOs don't know how to use them, they're not going to perform. They're not going to telling people how to, what to do. They're not going to, not going to recommend their product. You know, Midland had a very, a really, really strong second to IUL. And they stopped selling it three to five years ago because no one was selling it. When I say no one, there was, there was, when I talked to my IMO, my upline regional general agent, he said, he said, I think the company sold 50 of them that particular year, me and two other agents did the, did the bulk of it. That's never a good sign. You know, so it, it, it's, a, it's a phenomenal product. If you have access to them, I think Transamerica has one also. Um, but yeah, just call your IMO. Uh, Columbus. Columbus has one. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, LSW. Yep. Huh. State okay. Farm. State Farm. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, with the yeah. second to die policies, uh, you know, and, and I don't, okay, because it's hardly ever talked about, I just want to make sure that what I'm thinking is the correct thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second to die policies is more or less important because if you have a married couple, right, that one is like health deficient and the other is healthy, it makes it possible for them to get like the life insurance so that, right? And uh, the second to die policies. Also, uh, it helps to give benefits like with these benefits we have today, you know, the chronic rider illness and all this other stuff, right? Would they come into play as well? No. No. Unfortunately, no. I, I pushed... Uh, if they would make me a second to die IUL, second to die whole life of living benefits, I could sell it for days on end, but they will not. It's with the way the health of the clients are, because one's typically uh, um, a lesser health rating or, or a higher health rating, that the, the benefits would be exhaustive of the policies and would not work as well. So, oh, because they do that with long-term care. I know Mutual of Omaha, they have the long-term care where they take, if you, in fact, my client uh, 
couldn't get their uh their partner in Hawaii. We have domestic, you know, not marriages, but domestic mm -hmm. partnerships kind of thing. Yep. Couldn't get her uh, quote, boyfriend in because he has bad health. So she, uh, he couldn't get it by himself. But when she bought the uh, Mutual of Omaha, the, the guy that sold it to her, which I should have, but I didn't know about it. But anyway, he uh, he told her about it and she got, you know, she, her health is like mega perfect. And uh, his was really bad. So she got them both in where it, as long as she's alive, if he needs a long-term care, he gets it. So that's why I was wondering about the life insurance because they're doing that on the long-term care. Yeah, no, uh, on the on the life insurance, last I knew, there would be no living benefits on a second to die policy. It would, it just, it wouldn't work. You're better off, if that's right. the case, going for a more traditional long-term care uh, or using some of the more asset, the asset care from like One America, that has a little more liberal underwriting, uh, Minnesota Life with their life uh, life IUL hybrid um, would be a better fit for if they if they're looking for it for care purposes. I was told that if they cannot get the life insurance, well, long term care number one is the hardest. If they Absolutely. cannot get long term care by themselves, they're not going to be able to get long term care by those. Then you know it's going to be tough to begin with. That's uh, why I like the life insurance long term care. It's a lot less underwritten it's a lot it's a lot easier to get in most cases that's that's but why like, they, i i've been told by others that if they can't get the long-term <laughs> care to hit the annuities to get them the annuity work with companies that sell their annuities that give like a triple benefit kind of thing if they get into the long-term care situation mm -hmm. but that's right, the income the doubles do provide a lot of benefit if they have <laughs> cash on hand if they don't have cash on hand then what are they going to do Medicaid. Yeah, I mean, once it one if if you again if you if you don't have a lot of assets, you know, the long term care can, can be a prohibitive. It's a it's a want. I get that it's a want to want to be able to control your care, but where you don't have assets to protect, is it really necessary? That's a hard decision to help a client make. You know, but. You know, that's why, I, that's why I like the life stuff, the life, like the, the Minnesota life policy, the life LTC hybrid, um, the underwriting is nominal on it. So even the people that I have uh, that were pretty, pretty unhealthy, they still got a standard policy through that, through that product. It's not, it's not the best long-term care coverage. But it's something, you know, it's something better than nothing if they don't have cash on hand. Yeah, if they have cash to spend, if they have money to put in annuities and reallocate to self insure, absolutely. It can be a much stronger play, much more benefit for them. But they're still using their money. That's the downside of that. Make sense? Is this just open Q&A or what are we doing today? Open Q&A, whatever you want to ask. All right, I got a question. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am shocked. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> it is Jennifer. Go ahead, Jen. Hmm. Okay, so I, so I talked to this agent today who's thinking about coming into my downline, and he's talking to an attorney because he's $70,000 in debt, and the attorney tells him you have two choices. You can file for bankruptcy or I can do this plan for you. And I asked him, if, is it a, a debt consolidation plan? And he's like, well, I don't think so. But basically the attorney is saying he only has to pay 25% of his debt if he gives it to the attorney. And then the attorney will go to court for him and the attorney will send cease and desist letters to everybody um, telling him not to contact him about his debt anymore. And he's only going to have to pay 25% on the dollar and 25 cents on the dollar. And I thought, I'm going to ask Jeremy because I know Jeremy knows about this way more than I do. Yeah. Um, it's very vague on what, it, what he's actually doing. T typically, when I hear that uh, an attorney is saying, hey, you can pay 20% of your debt, that's what the typical settlement is. That's a, more of a debt consolidation type play. 
That's what I thought. You're having to stop paying on the debts, deferring paying the attorney's fees, and they'll try to settle the accounts for you. Now, you guys, I've told you guys my story of going through that debt consolidation where I spent, I was supposed to be 40,000, supposed to pay it off for 20, ended up paying 60, got sued a couple of times. It's not a fun process. If he can go bankrupt, you know, a chapter seven or even a chapter 13 would be a better position than doing the debt consolidation. But he has his securities licenses and he's afraid he's going to lose some, and afraid he's going to lose some of his life insurance contracts if he files for bankruptcy. And I'm pretty sure he will. If he, if he has existing contracts, it shouldn't be an issue. But moving them. It's because he'd be, he'd be getting new contracts where, where typically coming with bankruptcy kind of goes into. So if he's going to move under me, he should move under me first. Before, first. Before, <laughs> move months. first before pulling the trigger. Because once you even once you get into the, that consolidation, it still ruins your credit. Well, that's what I was thinking. And, and I didn't know if there was any difference between when an attorney did it or when someone else did it. But it didn't seem to me like this added up. So he said he, they were he was only going to have to pay 25 cents on the dollar for 18 months, 18 months payoff on a seventy thousand dollar debt. No. And, and that just didn't make that didn't add up to me. That'll cover the attorney's and, fees of that. And that's what I'm, that, and and that's what I told him. I said, no, the attorney's fees alone are going to be more than like, yeah. you know, they're going to, they have to make money doing this, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So again, I, that's not something I would, I, I, I would advise a anybody to go into. Again, if you're seventy thousand dollars in debt, move your contracts around, get everything set up where you want to be, and then go, you know, how, what's his current income approximately that he's he's pulling in. I'm guessing 35, 40,000. He's a, a public school teacher. Okay. So then, so it's going to be a chapter seven bankruptcy then. Yeah. A complete just er erasure of the debt. Yeah. I mean, so that's going to hurt his income. That's going to hurt his income or his credit for seven years. Then I'll have to rebuild. Uh, the debt consolidation is still going to hurt your credit for a minimum. It took mine almost 14 years to rebound from the debt consolidation. You know, so the bankruptcy is a much cleaner play, especially with, if, he, again, if he was making, you know, $140,000 a year, then we could do a chapter 13. It'd be a lot less structured or a lot less hard on him. But the consolidation is going to be the, is the kind of the worst option because it, without, if they're just saying 25% period, that's complete BS. Well, that, that's what it seemed like to me. That math didn't add up to me. Yeah. I mean, because I, when I had 40, I was paying $10,000 in fees on my 40. You know, so that on 70, you're looking at, you know, at least 15, 18,000 just in, in attorney's fees. Right. That's about all he's paying. Right. And they're not going to say, hey, let's sell your debt for zero. That's, that doesn't work that way. Right. They're going to want some kind of monetary offset. So yeah. even if you were able to negotiate with the credit card company and say, well, I owe 70, well, if you could pay 25, we'll call it quits. That's that's a that's a decent settlement. Uh -huh. That's a that's a really really great settlement <laughs> that you could get in that marketplace. But to pay I think for the attorney. <laughs> yeah. That's just that that yeah. Go if, if, if that's the case, you know, look at his complete situation. Um because does that debt include his home, his car, his it's mostly medical. Mostly medical. Yeah, just go chapter seven and knock it out. That'd be this that'd be the easiest play. And then the other the other thought I had was um, so I filed for bankruptcy nine and a half years ago. It's a 10-year bankruptcy. I am counting the days till it is done. Yep. It was the biggest mistake of my life. I owed 70,000, but you know, I'm in insurance now. I could have done that in six months, right? And so I so if if we let them just keep knocking on his door for six months and I actually teach him how to make seventy thousand dollars, what's your idea on that? Because that's what I offered him. I said, I'll teach you how to pay it off rather than go in either one of those ways. Yeah. I mean, it's still, I mean, his credit's gonna be damaged either way for short term. It, it already is. It He's already all, is. All, they're right. already suing him, right? They're already yeah. suing him. So they're already okay. suing him, and and so if we can find a way to help him, you know, create the income to pay it off, yeah, I mean it's going to be the less less damage of of the, all the of all the options because then you're already rebuilding from start without having to go through the bankruptcy, the trials, 
uh, the all the other processes that come along with that. Yeah, and then you get the monkey off your back. And the monkey's off the back, exactly. So that would be your number one? Yeah, I mean, again, if you can pay off the debt, that's always the best course of action. You know, if he, if he has- if you have the insurance license, $70,000 should be nothing. No, I mean, again, the, the average agent makes what, $45,000 a year at best? Well, that's crazy. That's, that's it crazy. is, it is crazy. But you teach people how to make more money than that. Oh, I teach people how to make more money than that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I can do, I can teach you how to make $70,000 in six months easy. Yeah. You don't make $70,000 in six months, then you're not listening to me. And I'm sure that you would say that to any agent who's working for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you just do the math on it, I mean, worst <laughs> case, right? If you if you learn two things, you know, how to ask the right questions, which is which is key to this entire business, and how to find the money for from from people's situations, how to reallocate money. You know, the average case is between four and eight thousand dollars in commissions. Most of the guys I work with are pulling $600 a month in premium, okay? That's what, a little over $7,000 in commissions. If you close one sale a week at $7,000 in commissions, how much are you making a year? <laughs> uh, $350,000. $350, Without having to kill yourself, spend $1,000 on marketing, buy leads, do any other processes that, that, that are being touted as the, the solutions. Just create conversations, set three appointments a week, close one for 7K, and you're, and you're financially set without working full time. We make this business way harder than it has to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, if he's willing to put the work in and, and follow your tutelage to get that point, yeah, that's the best option. And have that, you know, the bankruptcy and everything is, is the back door because some people are not made for insurance. Unfortunately, it's not everybody succeeds in this business. Right. Even the ones that I teach, I have an 85% success rate. Yeah. So there's still 15% that don't work out. It happens. Yeah. I, heard, I, heard, I, I was listening today to Mike, uh, Mark, Mark Halperin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know what that is? Mm -mm. Well, uh, Kinder knows. Um, anyway. My, Mark Halperin does extremely well in the millions in Canada. He's from Toronto. And one of the things that he, that I've heard him say before, but it registered this morning much better because I'm doing that, is he, his point was become hyper-specific, specialized in the business. Now, we've heard about, you know, the riches and niches and all that. But most people have a hard time na na nailing that down. Mm -hmm. Dude, I've nailed it down. Just this morning, I've already gotten three referrals. <laughs> I love it all by doing it all by doing the same exact thing for three for the last i don't know probably four months talking about one thing one thing one thing one thing the, not shifting to anything else not iuls whole life infinite banking uh i can do uh, retirement planning i can do estate planning by the way the estate planning uh Jen jennifer will uh will kick in at some point this year but my point is because i can have that discussion after the fact mm -hmm. So the, the question part, I totally agree with you, but when you get more people to talk to, it's so much easier. More of the right people to talk to. More of the right people. Mm -hmm. But that's the hyper-focus. It's not necessarily just the questions. It's the hyper-focus to talk about the one thing you do. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people just keep on funneling people that have that problem. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been talking about in the last, uh, with some of the guys I'm coaching now, we're, we're focusing on... Uh, Again, it, it hyper focusing or following your passion can be the same thing. So that's what I've been focusing on with Joe, with a couple other people, uh, with Jim and the group. You know, focusing on finding your passion. When you find your passion, you find your niche, you find the people you want to work with, the solution you want to provide. You're hyper focusing on that, and it's in a different way. Finding your passion makes you happier. What if you don't? If you don't feel passionate, I'm not passionate necessarily about what I do. Mm -hmm. But that hyper focus on the one thing allows me to do all the things we all talk about. Yep. Yep. The retirement planning, the the income planning, the the IUL planning, the whatever you can call it. But the hyper focused on the one thing funnels everything from that. Yep. I could give a shit about ooh, this is recording. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and it's being broadcasted. Right. Good job. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> gotcha. 
<laughs> so I got but, I got two part two parts of that uh, because Jennifer, you mentioned that the agent you're working with also has securities licenses. Yeah. So with that, the thing is that he's got to disclose that the biggest thing that companies don't want is the agent or advisor to withhold information when it's timely. So as long as they're disclosing all of that stuff, when it becomes pertinent, they need to do that. And I think they have like 14 to 30 days to disclose even to regulators. So for example, if I had to file bankruptcy in California, I'm supposed to let the state of California know. So there, there's all, uh, all kinds of disclosure requirements if they're going to go down a legal path. And this is all considered to, to be a compromise with creditors. So it's under that part of, of all of the forms and everything. Uh, but Ray, what you uh, just brought up, what I think we get niche focused backwards. A lot of the times we think about a niche focus as to who we want to talk to rather than let's have a right. niche service and talk yes. to everybody. And then the right people will show up. Exactly. And that's part of one of the things I'll bring up at the professionals forum. There's my, my drop name of that. So there we go. That's why um, I'm not coming. I already know the answer. <laughs> oh. Okay, Ray. So what did you choose? Hmm. The immediate care plan. The what? The the thing you saw from uh, Don Quante. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, he's a long-term care guy, so uh... yeah, long-term the 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 care funding. So I call I I basically call it care funding. And I and I started going to network groups that have the people who deal with the clientele that I want, and started having conversation with with them, explaining to them how this stuff works, how the asset-based long-term care concept works. Then I created I created a PowerPoint um, for myself using some case studies from Don Quante. I just made it in my colors and with my bubbles um, inside inside the PowerPoint. And I started setting up appointments 20 minutes at a time. That's the whole meeting. And, and I started showing them the, the stuff in the last month. I started doing the Zoom instead of going to meet them at their office. And like I said, this morning, I've gotten three referrals. I was like, what? Yesterday, I got one. The day before, I got one. I was like, how's this happening? <laughs> but I've been talking about asset-based long-term care literally for four months now. That's all I, anybody says to me, what do you do? I, I start asking him those three questions. You saw the three questions. Okay. I know what you're talking about now. Yep. Yeah. That's all I do is I ask them those questions and that starts, a, well, I've got that dialed in. Great. Let me ask you another question. And I go through the whole process. How do you, and then Jeremy kicks in. How do you feel about that? Like, <laughs> well, you know, I think it's covered. I said, well, doesn't sound like you've got it dialed in. Do you want to have a conversation about that? Well, maybe maybe we should. Okay, when do you have time to have that conversation? In the next week or two. So it's, it's just bizarre because all I talk about is, I, I, I literally did three meetings today, 20 minutes each one of them. And I saw, and I literally thought I should just record myself. And when they get on, just turn on the recording so that you can just, because it was the exact same thing. And then they say stuff, which is, Blowing my mind, they say stuff that I didn't even think to say because it's their terminology. So then I started using their terminology and I'm like, wow, they're really into this. So yeah, the hyper-focused is bizarre. And you're right. And you're right, David. It, it, it literally is about the service that you want to provide the most doesn't mean you can't do the other ones. It just means that's the starting point. You know, become, I have a friend you become known for that one. Yes. Thing. My, and, my and, goal and, is to be, is to be Don Quante in Minnesota. There you go. Um, I mean, the way Sandy Chassel puts it, it's being the red crayon. Yep. Correct. I, I just want to be Don in, in Minnesota. If I can be Don in Minnesota, I'll be very happy. I have a friend here in, 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 in the twin cities. That's a dentist. He went from a three, a, a, from three chairs, dental office to 14 to a second location and this and recently sold it for a, a I won't use the bad word, a lot of money. <laughs> His only advertising this whole and I never it never registered to me. And this is why I'm, I'm bringing this up. I knew that he was doing it. But for some reason, my brain didn't connect with it. He only advertised one. Well, technically two things, but one thing primarily fear dentistry. Sedation and fear dentistry. That's his whole marketing. He does more root canals than all the dentists within five mile radius of him combined. Mm -hmm. 
but he only went after one thing. What do you do? I help people with their fear of coming to the dentist. His commercials, his mar his marketing pieces, his website, everything was about fear dentistry. He had a book, Fear Dentistry. So. I heard something the other day about our passion. And it's that nobody starts with a passion, but it's what you spend your time on and what you learn and what you focus on that eventually becomes your passion. Mm -hmm. For me, that was just a light bulb moment that I didn't, I don't have to pick something, you know, in this area. That's my passion. It's what I focus on, what I spend my time on that will become my passion. And I've noticed that uh, whatever it is that I do spend my time on, no matter whether it's business related or not, that the most amount of time that I spend on something is what I'm passionate about that period of time, that day, that week, that month or whatever, you know, I'll take, uh, I'm taking some cooking classes and that's my passion, you know, and then I get back and I'm, I'm focusing on my business. Oh, that's my passion, you know, and I do some of my YouTube videos. Oh, that's my passion. And I've noticed it very, very clearly with me that the more I, whatever I am focusing on most is what I am passionate, most passionate about at this time in my life. And so if I want my business to be my passion, that's all I have to do is focus on. That's one of the first well, I ask a new when I'm talking to a new a new client I'm bringing on a new age to mentor is what do you enjoy helping your, your clients do? It's, it's so it's whether it's call it passion or hyper focus that's what we're trying to get to is what do you want to focus your business on? I, I think that's the wrong question. You, do, you don't know. Okay. I, I think that's the wrong question. I think that's why it takes a lot of us a long time to get to it. Okay. Yeah. So what's yeah, a better I, question? Because for seven years, I couldn't answer that question. Yeah, and neither could I. I, I agree, totally agree with you, Jennifer. Okay. I think I think the question should be, out of these 10 things, which, which one ignites you? Start. If it doesn't work out, change it later. But the bottom line is, like, for example, I've gone through all the training for uh, infinite banking. I've gone through the training for your family bank. I've gone through the training for power of zero. I've gone through the training with... Uh, uh, um, uh, Van Miller, I've gone through the, I've got, if I've gone through your training, right? So all of those, you combine all of those and you say to yourself, well, how did I end up with this thing? This is complete. I ended up because I found something that I think people have a pain with. Mm -hmm. And I can speak to that pain pretty much to anybody. You're 30 years old. You're 40 years old. You're 50 years old. You're 70 years old. I can have that conversation and where that conversation takes me, I have no idea. That's why I said the estate planning thing. I was not comfortable selling that concept. I'm I'm still a, a licensee for for uh, uh, Randall. I haven't sold one. I'm just I was just not comfortable with it. But I had a conversation yesterday with somebody. I literally said to him all of a sudden, I don't even know where this came from. I'm like, you know, we should have a conversation about your estate plan because I think you'd learn a couple of things from me. And they say yeah. And he goes and he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, and then it was Jennifer's question. Well, do you have do you have a will, a trust, or or the government plan? And he goes, I, I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> so my point is, it, the question to ask somebody, what do you want? I don't think anybody has a clue. It's 50-50. It, Again, I have some clients that have, I've asked that question to, and they they know exactly what they what they wanted or accomplished. Not sure how to go about it. Wow, that's awesome! But it's I, the big yeah. picture of what they want to help do. So I did not have so that. Then we can narrow it down from there. So again, every situation is going to be a little different on every different, every single age. It's going to be a different way to ask the question, different way they can answer the question and so forth. It's up to us as the advisor to pull the information out of them. Same with our clients. We're asking questions to find out more about their situation and what they want to accomplish long-term financially for themselves. I use that same process on every agent I talk to because I want to find out more about what makes them tick and what they want to accomplish. Again, I, I have, say, I have no idea what I want to do. Okay. Well, Thank you know, you. you know, well, what brought you in this business? Well, I want to sell IUL. Okay. What makes you want to sell an IUL? What intrigues you about that product that makes you want to make it the focus of your life for the next 20 years? You should role play these with one of us rather than one-sided conversations here. 
<laughs> just an idea. I mean, you go down these conversation chains and it's like you've got all you've got all of us sitting here. We, any one of us could answer those, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So well, well, one of the questions I usually ask is, you know, okay, when you got your license, what did you have in mind when you were studying for it? What were you planning to do? Make some and, money. And, and here's the thing, though, is that there's other companies that are big recruiting organizations, and we know who they are. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, look, I was going to get started with them, but then it just didn't feel right. Now I don't know what I can do. Now, for me, I'm going to I'll throw a plug. I've got a video called uh, the, My Monopoly Model to Companies, Markets, and Designations. And I send people to that because I use the Monopoly Board to say, here's these different properties. Here's these different focuses that you can do. What rings true to you? And once we know that, now we know where to direct you. Uh, to get the, the training and the organization, the guidance and everything that you need. So that's what I do. Of course, I created that. Um, not everybody's going to do that with new agents. And then my next video, which is fun, is the, my guide to interviewing the interviewer to make sure that once you found somebody, <laughs> here's the questions you need to ask once you know that they want you. <laughs> so so you're making sure that's a decent enough fit for you. Then from there, it depends on you know where they're going and what else they need to, to sharpen their toolbox with. Mm -hmm. David, if if you hear I want to make some money, what would you what would you say? I might quote Tom Love and say, "Go up at a Taco Bell." Yeah. <laughs> if if your only goal is to make money, this is probably the worst business for you to get yep. into. If Absolutely. that was your only goal, why? Now, if you really have a have a passion for helping people in some way, shape, or form, now we just got to refine what was it in particular. And then refine it. And we can always evolve, but we need to find something to start with now. And then it can evolve everything over time later on. So but that's it for me. I, I want to make some money. Eddie, I'm with you. That's all I came in here to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're also taking the effort to learn it. Most people that say, I, I want to make some money, that's where it ends. I just want to make some money. And they think it's a, it's, there's no, you're taking the time to learn verbiage. You're turning the, taking the time to learn concepts. You're taking the time to learn product. You're turn, taking the time to learn how they all work together. You're sitting down and having conversations with other people in the business. Most people that say, I want to make some money. It's like, I want to make some money because it, I understand you know, that. But, but I mean, if, if you're asking me that and that's my response, the, how are you going to help me when I say, I want to make some pick money? Pick a lane, pick a lane. Be hyper focused about one thing: IULs, whole life, infinite banking, your family bank, uh, 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 Jeremy's uh, program. Pick a lane: annuities, uh, uh, long term care. Pick one lane. Become the guy for that. That's what I would tell you. And I don't care which lane, because if you're not passionate about any of them, any will do. Yeah. So then you got to go down to who do you want to work with? Yeah, there's a series of questions you can ask for that thing, specific topic. You know, I've had clients tell me, I just want to make money. Okay, well, that's, that's what we're all in this business to do eventually is we get paid to do what we do. We all want to make money. But what is about this business that really brought you into it? Besides the opportunity to make money, what is it that, you know, what's your story of why? Not everybody has one. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a hard one too. It can't, it, well, the, then the other side would be what market do you have access to? Mm -hmm. Who, That's what type true. of people do you know what type of people what are you willing to do are you what? willing to make cold calls are you willing to walk into businesses and introduce yourself you know the, that can also help formulate an action plan and a particular uh message depending or, or on what the market, market, or what market are you already in that you don't realize you're in so if you have yeah. hobbies mm -hmm. you know I, I didn't have i don't have any hobbies i'm, I'm like the most boring individual in, in history um so i don't i don't go i don't leave my basement unless i absolutely have to so I had no hobbies. I'm like, all right, so how do I find these people? Right? And the and the asset-based long-term care directed me to it. And I was like, oh, there's groups for that crap. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said another bad word. Um, so yeah, so pick a lane, Eddie. I mean, that's 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 the way I look at it. What lane do you want and which people do you want to work with? And who do you currently have access to that you see in, in bigger numbers that you can access more of those people? All great questions. Yeah, because if you don't have enough quantity, the quality or the laser focus on everything probably right. won't matter as much. You need to right. get enough repetition and enough of the, uh, what Wayne Cotton would say is the rhythm of the business. You got to have enough rhythm uh, and such. And then you can add in some specialty things here and there. But I, I wouldn't want to base everything on just the specialty. 
and and then and then it also and then and then at that point you you have to systematize it because just because you built it doesn't mean it'll continue right correct so so it's easier to systematize this is what i'm learning if it's one thing it's hard to systematize everything so i can send an email to all these care providers that i've met over the last 5 months it's the same email I can talk to each one of them. I can follow up, have the exact same conversation five times a day. It sounds exactly the same. They don't know I talk to four other people. And and that's that's the that's why I said, Jeremy, it's it's hard because it's a it's it's a it's a mental, it's a mental um uh roller coaster because you're in this business, shiny object, shiny object, shiny object, shiny object. And you're like, well, what do I do first? When I saw Randall's thing last year. I was like, oh, this is great. I really like this idea. It makes total sense. And then I thought, I'm not comfortable with it. But I, for some reason, thought, someday I might want to do this. So I stayed on, on the program. Mm -hmm. Haven't sold one. Haven't even tried. Yesterday literally was the first time I actually said the words to somebody about it. <laughs> uh, hey, Jeremy, can you hear me? It's Kevin. Yeah, hey, Kevin, what's up? Uh, well, it's taking 180 degrees. What if you really don't care about making a lot of money? And once when you get their money, you're you don't feel like doing the application. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, that's interesting. That's, a, that's an interesting take. About, <laughs> get, see, get a Red Bull. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, are you just and, sitting on the beach or what? What's that? <laughs> Are you just sitting on the beach or what? No, I'm not working. I'm at the fire station today. Oh, okay. Everybody has like these background things. Well, this actually is real. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> Can you believe it? And I just got back from an extrication that we got the guy out and only had a scratch and the car was completely totaled. So now I get to do my insurance stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but it, but yeah, I, I mean, should I get my wife to do the applications? I am serious. I cringe. I would rather, um, well, have something not nice done to me personally <laughs> than sometimes do a freaking application, even if it's e-app. Yeah. I mean, so then it, it's, you know, I know your wife. So, yeah, getting her to do the apps for you would not be a bad idea. If all you yeah. have to do is collect signatures and she goes back, fills the rest of it out with the client, absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. That saves you time because, again, we want to put what, what we make money doing, Right. And for the major for you, you make money talking to people, mm -hmm. talking to firefighters, talking to small businesses in the local area. That's what you enjoy doing. Yeah, I enjoy. Yeah, I mean, my, my drive is you know helping my guys and gals. And mm -hmm. well, um, I shot a text to a, a captain. He retired last week. Um, I didn't know him personally. But, hey, belated congratulations in your retirement. Um, if you have any issues with your deferred comp, I've helped some other firemen. Feel free to um, get back with me. Crickets until uh, this afternoon. I was trying to get a nap because I was trying to to do other than the freaking. Can you hear me, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Damn thing. Um... All right. But yeah, I was uh, taking a nap because I was trying, I was procrastinating not to do, um, it's a freaking um, MIGA app. So I'm not going to be paying anything on them. Yep. But I have to do them because it's the right thing for her. Yep. So, but uh, anyway, this guy uh, woke me up and then um, I actually got stumped because we were talking about his uh, 457 plan. And I was like, you know, I have no idea. I don't even know if you have one what your um, concerns are with it. Um, but how are you with uh, your money being at risk? Well, he was fine with it because he was under the assumption that that was status quo. So it kind of hit me for a snag. Um, all that being said, when somebody is doesn't even know what we do and is not aware of the um, upside gains 0% floor, 
what's a good conversation to have with this guy? He's 57. You know my people. They've got mm-hmm. the pension. We've got the drop. He's married, but he's 53. So he says, like, Kevin, if all this money goes away, it's not a big deal. And, and, I, and I get that. But how can I flip that? I don't know if it's getting it off the government's radar and we're going more life sale. It's or finding a pain um, point for it. We got to find a, a pain yeah. point. Right. You know, and, and for somebody, again, you know, a captain has been in the business, he's been in, in, the, in the fire station for 20 years. He's going to get 80% of his salary when he retires. He has a drop program. You know, income is the least of his issues. He has plenty. Right. right? So if this money disappeared tomorrow, it wouldn't, it's not going to change his situation. No. It's going to change the bonuses and what he can do. But again, how many people, how many fires have we seen that have not touched that money, have not needed that money? Right. At some point. Yeah. So we have to find a pain point, you know, whether it be talking about extended care, you know, as a a firefighter, we know that, you know, the health Um, health situation is there. I did ask him how comfortable he was with, you know, his wife taking a 25% pay cut. It was like, I don't know if you've been uh, keeping tabs on our Facebook page with JFRD, but um, we don't seem to be living too long here. And he's like, yeah. So, I just want, I'm not wanting to sell them. I'm just wanting to create enough concern. Like, damn it. Yeah, we, we do need to do that. That's all, you know, yeah. without having to, hey, um, I can give you uh, market type returns, no market risk. Um, I can have you income you can never outlive. Blah, 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 blah. It's just like, all right, whatever, man. American Gladiators on fire. So, so Kevin, know. if I may. Yeah. Uh, so this firefighter, obviously retired, he's put his life on the line multiple times to serve his, to serve everybody, and this is part of his life's work. And he's okay with other forces outside of his control to basically rob him of it. Is he truly okay with that? That's good. Yeah. That's what this I would is, look at because there yeah. is a threat. Now he says he's okay because he's accepted as the status quo, but the fact is these are controls outside of his outside of his, his control. And he's worked his entire life for that benefit. Wouldn't if he could would want to learn how to conserve that, even if it's not for his own benefit, but for somebody else, like his his wife and kids or grandkids, wouldn't that be a better mm-hmm. strategy to to parlay to parlay that rather than letting it be at risk to forces outside his control? Yeah. That's my thinking there. I would bring up the pain that he worked his entire life for it. He's entitled to it, and he doesn't have to let it be at the forces of someone else. What's the purpose of that? And one? that's why you make the big bucks. So yeah, you have to be something <laughs> along the lines of, you know, we spent our whole career mm-hmm. um, helping mitigate risk, size up risk, risk versus reward. What if we could now do that with 100% certainty from a financial standpoint? Would that be of interest? Makes sense. You know, just the other stuff along those lines. Mm-hmm. Well, well okay. be aware of, of going to the solution too quickly. I would explore that problem. I want that problem to sting like a paper yeah. cut and lemon juice and Tabasco on it. I want them to finally beg me. Say, what can can we do something about that? I didn't know that we could do so. Well, if you're asking my opinion that we could get together and have a conversation, there might be some ideas, but I want that thing to sting. I want mm-hmm. it to 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 swelter on him a little bit more to realize that he's at risk right. of losing something that he was already okay with losing now realizing that oh i'm letting it go away and i'm not even fighting to keep, try to keep it so i i would explore that problem even more make it visceral yeah peel back the onion more yeah what's the purpose our, our word is um evisceration not visceral yeah <laughs> whatever but, but peeling the onion i want to make him cry mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah no absolutely yeah okay all right. Um, and lastly, my people, I mean, he, he confessed he's not a financial guru. Is there, David, do you have some sort of a flow chart that says, hey, this is a IRA. This is qualified money. This is non-qualified. This is life insurance. This is 401k. This is 457. Something where they can see a flow chart because they just don't know. They're not idiots. It's just something it's it's cling on to them, you okay. know, but something to where I can just lay it out on the table and we can walk through. Now, hey, if you move your 457 to an IRA, well, then 
you can't touch it to 59 and a half without penalty. You know? um, if we take this 457 money, we can move it to life insurance, but we're probably going to have to pay taxes depending upon how it's set up. You know, something where it's a, a visual type board where do you kind of get the just what I'm saying? I think I got what you're saying. I'm trying to think of there's a resource alpha that does that. And I can't think of one. Uh, oh, I like a yellow pad and paper. And yeah. Then, yep. But my handwriting what, sucks. So, so does mine. So get on PowerPoint <laughs> and what you would write on paper, create a PowerPoint slide and print it out. Yeah. Of how, of how it works create your own chart um because you're gonna you're gonna know better than i would what questions they're asking and what you want to explain to them they don't even know what to ask okay you know so um and i and i don't say that in uh in a negative way yeah no they i just, know. They just don't know mm -hmm. um, so um like um i had a conversation 72 hours ago or last trick a uh, very intelligent captain. Um, he was unaware. He's 39, the captain. So he's going to retire by the time he's 48 or 50. Well, he's putting money into his Roth for 57. I was like, Tyler, are you aware you're paying taxes on this money now? It's growing tax deferred. Then when you pull it out, you're going to be taxed on the gains until you reach 59 and a half and let you just leave it there i was like no and i actually have it for off of um, irs.gov where it, it tells that you have to be when you're pulling money out of a roth 457 um it's taxed um if you pull it out prior to 59 and a half okay you, you, you know uh van van miller has uh focused on that the last three months with his um newsletters so you, I get those. Well, you you you, you may want to take. Uh, As you can tell, I don't read them, but I get that. them. Yeah, yeah, you, you may want to <laughs> take a look at it. Um, and and he's using the tax code to really drive that point home. So I I, I would recommend that. Yeah. Also, listen to the uh, he does that video thing as well too that comes out a few days after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The because I don't because I don't read it, so therefore. When I have to, I watch either. the video and then when I watch his video on that that he goes over the entire newsletter, yeah. then I'm like, oh shit, I better read this. Oh, excuse my language. <laughs> I say, oh, I say, oh, you know, I better read this. You know, uh, I better read this part. You know, because then he breaks it down, so I have to. I don't have to read the whole letter, because I'm not exactly great at reading myself. So when he goes over that points and I go, okay, I gotta circle this, and he tells you what part it is on the newsletter and stuff. So that 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 discussion that he has he doesn't let anybody talk i think he pre-records the thing and then uh it's about an hour long kind of stuff and it's it goes over that because some of us like myself are better to hear stuff and see pictures than it is to read the words and <laughs> and we don't get it after like 10 readings you know what i mean <laughs> mm -hmm. well i'm gonna yeah. drop it again uh if you want to meet van and ask him questions and all the other speakers that are going to be on stage at the professionals forum and just get it all done at one spot hey nashville that's all i'm saying <laughs> um at, at the end of february february 20th 29th and first uh it's gonna be awesome I, I i'm looking so forward to being there so myself if I go, can we have a birthday party it's my birthday oh all right kidding kidding <laughs> <laughs> What are the costs on that anyway? Uh, they're there at the website, and there's three to, three or four different packages. So I'll just drop that uh, in a link here. Just and don't tell Ray you're going. All right. So the guy who's asking about the firefighters is that Kevin? Because yeah, just yeah. Kevin, what is the purpose for this guy's money? I know he's already got a pension and everything. So what is the purpose for this pile of money? He. Was on the job for 25 years, so this was basically uh, $200 a pay period just going into this account from his paycheck. Uh, right, but have you your question, we didn't have our. This was just a five, seven minute conversation I had with him this afternoon. He doesn't have a specific purpose other than the fact that um, he knows that he should address it. And because 
when we retire, we're making the same money with the the drop in pension, you know. So he, he just doesn't know what um, he doesn't he doesn't has not assigned a um, a, a sector of duty for it yet. Okay, and so you're going to give him ideas of things that retirees do with a lump sum of money. I'm asking what's important to him, you know. Well, I, I don't know what I do. He is, doesn't know, right? And so uh, my stuff's kind of like jujitsu. I have no agenda for where my appointments go. Um, sometimes I have to. That's why I bring uh, Tilly. Tilly, yeah, and she. Or sometimes she has to help me out. Tilly, where you at? <laughs> yeah, there she is. Tilly. That's good. See. Yeah, she's on point right now. We're fixing yeah. to go to work. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but no, no, I just ask questions and then find out what their concern is. And then we run from there. And that's what's fun about it to me. Um, just because it's like choose your own adventure. It's, it's similar to hunting. And I love to hunt. Stuff like that. And uh, But fundamentally, though, my concern is extended care and of something, um, our incidence of cancer and wacky uh Autoimmune disorders are through the roof, secondary to products of combustion, um, just uh, exposures, things of that nature. So I'm very, very adamant about um, putting some levels of financial protection in place for us. So not necessarily for us, but for those that we care about most, uh, because it really stinks. Um, and I know that personally. So that is my passion, is not necessarily taking care of them but taking care of the, their kids or their wife, you know. So that's probably actually that is where that um, conversation will go. Now, if he uh, heads it off, then it'll stop and we won't mention it, you know. So does that answer your question? Well, it's not really my question. <laughs> okay. It was, well, it, it was, should have been because I could have answered it good. i tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> it was my question to you is have, have you gone down that road with him? So because... Yeah, because if you don't have a if you don't have a, a reason why you know if you don't know what the purpose of that money is then you know it doesn't matter which direction you go with it they've got to have that purpose first they've got to have some kind of a pain they've got to have some kind of a need or some kind of a want or we have to incite it right and, yeah. and induce that pain so sometimes people too many people are are uh, painless or, or they have, they're so full of pain killers that you try to instill pain and they can't feel anything. So you got to find something and draw them out of it. Uh, so then you can say, well, if that's really an issue, let, let's have a conversation about it. And yep. just don't go to the solution too quickly. That's the, that's the big thing that will kill it. Yep. Right. <clears throat> Agreed. Good talk. <laughs> Sell them a life insurance policy. <laughs> you would. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Mm -hmm. Once I show him how it worked, yeah, actually, no, no. Let, let me let me clarify. He'll buy it from me. Exactly. Yeah, first, no. Um, first, sell it, then no, let him read the I, fine print. We, I mean, it'll it'll be a serious uh, conversation if we want to get the money off the government's radar. So, um, whether we put it into a premium deposit account, um, move it in however in different ways. Because yeah, I'm a huge advocate of. Um, the, the life insurance side of it. Yeah. Well, you can move it to an annuity to fund the life insurance. Double yeah. sale, completely ethical. Preserves the money while you're building it up the policy. That's what, that's what we do with the PDA account. Same basic premise. It's a fixed annuity. We get a small commission on it. And a fund yeah. it's automatic into the policy. It keeps it really simple for the, for the, for the client. Yeah. Midlands, I think theirs is like four, four and a half percent for the PDA. PDA. Um, and it's just Ooh, less okay. moving parts. So there's lots of different ways. Uh, I on. wish that F and G had a, a PDA. They don't because their caps are a hell of a lot higher than middle. Yeah, love that but name F and G. Okay, <laughs> you don't like them? It's better than F and U. Yeah, mm. I, yeah that's true. I'm just saying it's just just the name. I, I, I have I. So there are some companies I have an unfounded bias against. So that, that I tell you up front, I have an unfounded bias against a couple companies. I haven't looked them any further. It's unbiased or, or unfounded. I just I have those biases for whatever reason. So um, that's my too. way of saying that I don't have, I have an issue. <laughs> yeah, 
when I started looking at their renewal rate history, that's when my biases started to go away. Okay. There you go. But it, they're not the only error in the quiver. Oh. And that's what makes me go crazy about this line of work is you can arm share it to the nth degree. <laughs> it drives me crazy. And then I have to sit down with Tilly and she talks to me while I'm on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Tilly is the Jacksonville Department's uh, emotional support dog, for those who don't know. David, uh, you yeah. just need to say F and G slower. <laughs> That's one thing I can do good is be slow. So I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, Lonnie. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and that's a good point. <laughs> Absolutely. So what other questions or topics we're going to talk about today? We've got a few more minutes. Um, well, Jeremy, if you ever come across anything where you think my wife would be good at marketing for me or doing something mm -hmm. because she wants i mean and i'm not i'm not being funny or anything she hates insurance but if there's something that would set appointments for me or something that she could do as like a part-time business mm -hmm. i can start dropping or dripping that on her because she wants out of her family business all right i'll get i'll come up with some ideas and get with you on that okay i'm not I'm serious all right because she mentions it from time to time she's like I just, Kevin, I just wish I could just never freaking go back to work again. It's like, mm -hmm. Ooh. And sometimes it's like, Tilly, get over here. I'm like, okay, so. But I don't know if she's been burned so bad by the insurance that she couldn't say anything or or what. So I'm sure we can find the, if, the right thing to help her that would help but excite her to do something that would contribute to your business. I'm sure we can find a couple ideas for her. Yeah. When I was screwed up about four years ago, she wanted to um, get into being a mental health counselor. Uh, and she was so passionate about that, but it didn't pay anything. And she had to get um, a master's degree. Yeah. And um, hey, she's 44. I'm like, no, she's not going back to school for all that. <laughs> no. But okay. it was just awesome seeing that spark and that passion because it's painful to watch somebody. I gotta finish the Zoom call first. Just cringe going to work every day. You know? Yeah. Right, so, no, it's, it's brutal. Sorry for the rant. Oh, you're good. Sure. You're absolutely good. I might go All right. So, what other questions do we have today? All right. So, I got one. All right. All right. So, this is marketing. So, I've been putting together um, a piece that I'm going to send out for estate planning to all my mortgage protection clients. And I have about 2,500 old mortgage protection leads that I need to work before the law changes. So, <laughs> um, so I have a little, I, I did take one of their marketing pieces. Um, Doug, turn your, turn your thing off, your speaker off, um, your microphone off. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have, I took one of the marketing pieces that they already had, and it was a quiz on if you need a will or a trust. And I really, really updated it and ended up making an avatar so that people will self-select. Um, yep. And I think it's a very, very powerful piece. So it's just a flyer. It's a two, it's a front and back flyer, eight and a half by 11, right? And so then I was going to put that inside a card because for Black Friday, Avery had <laughs> this sale on their blank cards. And mm -hmm. I bought like, I don't know, 10,000 of them or something. I have a ton of them. <laughs> So, so before I sign up with that card marketing company, I thought I'm, I might as well use these, right? So they're the same. They're eight and a half by 11. You fold them in half. They're yeah. the same size. All right. So I started writing um, the, what I was going to put inside the card. And I ended up writing um, a, um, oh, the term went right out of my, my mind right now. What is it that you call the letter? Um a heartfelt letter? Heartfelt, heartfelt letter. I ended up writing a heartfelt letter. So it's like a page and a half. Okay. So I don't know if that is too much to put inside, to put in the card, or should I just have the card just be very simple, put a letter and a flyer in the card. It does need to be all together 
my little marketing thing needs to be all together in one, but I don't know if I should just do a card with a whole bunch of words or a very simple card with a letter and the flyer. Simpler the better because you, you want them to do the quiz, right? That's right. the step one to take. That's the action step we're trying to take. So the shorter the better, you know. It doesn't matter. The words are going to be the same amount of words. Do I want the words on the card or do I want the words on a separate piece of paper? Same amount of words. It's just oh. Uh, I don't think it really matters either way because the words are looking at the words then. Right? So if you have how compelling are the words? That's that's I guess that's the big point. I think it's I think it's really we good. Think it's, oh, we all we write something we all think it's awesome when we write it ourselves. I mean, let's, let's be real. Um you know, so well, I, didn't, I didn't intend for it to be a heartfelt letter, but when I got to the end, I was like, oh, I just wrote a heartfelt letter, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it really was. If, you can, if you're not going to do a quiz after you read something like that, you're not ever going to do a quiz. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is that. It's yeah, so it's if you good. put it on the card, it's they really read it, the quiz. If they, if they get to the card, they're not compelled, they're not going to do the quiz. So right. I put it on the card. The quiz is, the quiz is flashy, colorful, and it's going to, yeah. it, it's both pieces, I think, are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. that's just does my the, thought does the quiz at the bottom have a thing for them to fill out to scan and email it back to you as a um information request form or something like that because that's when i could see you know if, if you're having a separate eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper you know someone could scan it in email it to you say hey here's my quiz by the way i'm interested in talking about xyz or whatever else uh it's just the thought that came to my mind and the other thing you could do oh. again, again I'm, I'm all about automation and yeah. cutting costs you know, so is there a way to use the card to generate the action from the go online and fill out the quiz? Oh, uh, Google Funnel online all together. A Google Funnel? I, I'm, yeah. Well, a, I mean, a Google, Google Form. Funnel or a landing page, drip sheet, whatever you want to freaking call it, doesn't matter. Is to get, get them to take that step to scan the QR code, click a link, you know, go to this page, put information and answer the questions in the quiz and hit submit. That way it's automatically done for you. It's less costly than doing a kind of, mail reply card or whatever where you have immediate i wasn't going to do a uh, mail reply card yeah uh, no i was just going to have them contact me um i mean so i'm not good at doing uh, you know setting up funnels and all that kind of stuff that's what i don't know how to do yet that's why mm -hmm. i thought i'm going to use what i have what yeah. i have are 3,000 pieces of paper that need to be used up before June 30th. That's yeah. what I have, okay? Yeah, so I mean- so I am really good at writing, so that's what I have, and I made a phenomenal flyer. That's what I have, and I have 10,000 blank cards. That's what I have. Well, there you go. Pocket, and, right, and that's you, what I have. You had, you had your process. So <laughs> put the letter in the card. Like, I'm gonna use what I already have right now, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put the letter in the card, attach the, you know, put the, pull the flyer, put it in the, in the, in the, in the, in the rest of the rest of the information and send them. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so if I can figure out how to do a QR code and a landing page, that's what I thought I would do is just put a QR code on that thing and have them go to a landing page. Right. Yeah. All right. Now, so I don't know how many I should send out. I'm not going to send out 3000 at once. I'd be completely overwhelmed. Yes. So, but I don't know how many I should send out at like a week. I would, I want to do this once a week. And you have 3000 pieces. Yeah. I don't need to have it spread out. I mean, I could do it, but I just need to know about how many would be a good amount to start. Do you use bulk mail? So I'm going to start with my current book of business. Okay. So Sorry. are you, are you planning, Eric? Are you planning using bulk mail, bulk bulk mail, or bulk mail rates, or just for a stamp? Usage? I have I have ten thousand stamps too, so I'm just All putting right. a stamp on that. <laughs> so, what kind of response are you expecting from a thousand pieces? Well, I have never done this before. Mm -hmm. so it's that's a not, hard call, right? It is, but uh, on my so. I know it's a hundred percent open rate, 99.9% .9 open rate. So yeah. I know I've got that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know I've got, you know, um, 
I know I got something different than what they've ever gotten before. I know I've got something to catch their attention. I know I've got all of that. I know it's something that every single person needs. Okay. So, so let's start by saying, okay, let's say if you send a thousand pieces, you'll get 200 back. 200 responses. Okay. That would be okay. something. That's about a 20. That's a huge return. That's a huge return, right? Traditionally right. on bulk mail. Again, right. I'm not doing bulk. You're not doing bulk mail is a 2% response rate. So if we even we say 10, that'd be a hundred per thousand. That's probably, that's, I think that's probably kind of high still. I I, my guess, I best guess, right? So if you, if you do a thousand a month, you'd have about 200, we have 100 and 200 responses. That's a lot. That's a lot, <laughs> right? So we have five and a half months to drip this out. So I'd be probably shooting for 500 to 700 a week being sent out. That'll get everything crossed off by June uh, and all those responses coming in between now and then. That, would, that's, that feels doable to me. 500 or 50? Either 500, 500 times a week. And 500 I've, a month. Oh, Sorry. a month. Okay. I, month. I, I, I was so like, that'd be a little over 100 a week. Okay. All right. About 25 a week ish, somewhere in that range. Okay. About, 20, about, about 25 to about 50 a week. All right. So if I started at 150, yeah. then I can scale up or down as I need. Correct. Okay. All right. So if I do, if I, I can figure out how to do a landing page, um, are you saying to put the quiz on the landing page? Yes. So in, in the card, you would put your letter in a QR code from the scan to go to the online page where they could fill out the online quiz and then it'd be sent directly to you. So you have an immediate lead. Okay, and I can do that through Google? You can do it through Google. You can do it through uh, ClickFunnels. There's all kinds of different services you can use to create an online form. You can even do it in Facebook. I don't know how detailed our form is, but you can create a landing a, a, a form in Facebook too now. So again, what, what CRM are you currently using? Agent CRM. Agent CRM. I haven't played with that one enough. Uh, they have built-in ClickFunnels. I go. know, but I don't know about... The, the form i don't understand that part so the form is monkey. just a page you create in click funnel so you so page you go in and create so how many how many questions are on your quiz five but it is uh they, they can have more than one answer okay so it's multiple choice no they can they have to answer as many as apply to them okay so you're basically wanting to so for example, on the home, this is the first question, uh, on your home, do you rent? Do you own, you have equity less than $50,000 equity, more than 50,000 property and uh, more than one property and property in more than one state. So they could have three or four of those, right? Okay. So, but they're all, okay. So, so you have a question basically. So question one, do you, do you have a tax box for their answer? And they get points for, depending on which ones they choose, they get so many points. And then the points all add up to say whether they need a will, a trust, or nothing. Oh, okay. And, and I give them the answers at the end. I literally give them the answers. Okay. What they need. <laughs> so I'm, it's a high value because if they don't need a trust, they're not going to contact me. So they're mm -hmm. self-selecting. Yeah. I'm trying to think how to build it, what to build it in. Um, my first go-to is, is to use MailChimp to use the, their, their forms. It's easy to use. It's easy to build multiple choice, different selections, radio buttons, all the different pieces we need to do the scoring at the end. Um, I don't know how detailed ClickFunnel is through branding's agent CRM. I don't know either. I haven't done that yet. I, I have... I have an account. I'll get on there tonight, tonight and tomorrow, and I'll look at the ClickFunnel form to see what can be built in there um, and see how hard it would be to build it. And then I can give you, a, you know, kind of an idea if, if you can, if it's able. Because again, you're, you're pretty smart when it comes to everything we talk about. I'm sure you could, if I gave you a few basic steps here, do this, this, and this, you can follow it and maybe they'll knock out of the park. Yeah, I could. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like it needs to be, um, I mean, the graphics don't need to be super on it, but having question layout. Uh, so if we did, I'm trying to think of the old school. Um, I think, I think of Facebook quizzes when I see this stuff, when I think about, it. so you have question one, you have question one and you have a box, a box, a box with a couple different answers next to it. Um, so that's easy to build by itself. If you, you can assign values to each box in mm -hmm. the funnel to have itself score. I think that can be done. So you'd have the, the same process as building that same piece, the same question is duplicate it and then allocate your points. How are the point, are the points allocated based on just this raw text? Or is it these answers determine what these points are worth down here? Is it increasing scoring or is it more just a flat scoring? It's it's increasing. <clears throat> okay. Okay. My best recommendation to you, <laughs> because this is going to be more complicated than what it needs to probably for what that most of us could do by ourselves. You probably want to contact someone in 5R. Fiber or um, Upwork or whatever, and see if they, and what, reach out to a web developer to build that page for you. I mean, you're looking at hundred bucks to build it. It's not going to be super expensive. It's just that they you know, need some pr custom programming API language to help do the scoring and everything else. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, that would probably the best opportunity, best step. Okay, and then if I get this going. Um... My goal is to hire as many mortgage protection agents as I can, because mortgage protection, I think, is just a gateway to estate planning. Mm -hmm. And every person who owns a home needs a trust. Yeah. So it's kind of like a no brainer to me. So if I can get this going, I'm going to use this particular um, marketing for every mortgage protection, mortgage protection agent that I hire into my downline for estate planning. Yeah. So that's my goal. So I want to make it, you know, good for me, but then... I'm the guinea pig and then they'll i'll use yeah, this for that is duplicatable from there so absolutely okay all right awesome thank you yep what other questions do we have before we got about i just wanted to come on just say good stuff jeremy i wanted to um share like about what um ray was talking about being you know he's not on here now but but really being focused this new year became like a, a decision i made to really cut back on barbering and, and not even promote it on Instagram or just remove the name completely. And it's like, I've got my group of guys that it's going to be like, we just hush, hush. I told them, you, you mentioned people that I'm a, I'm a barber or introduce me as a barber. I'm going to fire you as a client. I just tell them straight up. So I'm the, from this point on, I got the RFC. I'm a, I'm a registered financial consultant. I only want to be known as that, but no longer a barber because I've been doing it for 30 years. And it's really just to move forward in there. And it's been like, what, not even two weeks. And business has been coming in because the I, I met with this guy and he is does well, four hundred thousand dollars a year he makes. And he said, um, you know, it was the beginning of the year, remember? He said, you know, I'm I've no I've seen you on Instagram, what you do. The financial barber brand is kind of cool, like sit in the chair, teach you a fine. But he says, I I have and then my wife and I, we were always like, Well, if we work with Daryl, does he really know his stuff? Because why is he still cutting hair? It's just like he's kind of not choosing the right path, he's kind of in two lanes, right? And he said, but he pretty much said, excuse, I'm not going to say the bad word, but he said, you know, your crap pretty much, you know, your stuff. And, and I, I'm impressed. And then he said, but I'm going to be brutally honest with you. And don't take this the wrong way. He said, if, if I were to introduce you to my millionaire friends, they probably want to do business with you because they want somebody committed as what they do in the finances, because they see that you're a barber, they may take it the wrong way. It's a cool brand for a certain clientele for your guys that are barber clients. It's cool. But who are you trying to service here? What's your, what's your brand? What are you trying to do? It kind of hurt my ego a little bit, but it was right. What Ray said and everybody was saying, if we just need to be like hyper-focused on what we want to do, and then you're going to, you're, the, you put it out in the universe, not trying to get spiritual here, but it's like, it comes back to you because you're really putting it out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that. I said, hey, I appreciate your honesty. And I just said the next day, I just cut it all out, removed the branding of the financial barber, just did all of that. And now people are like DMing me like, hey, we got to get together. And it's it's weird how it works out that way. 
So it, I just wanted to touch base on that. And because I made that commitment, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bit scary because I'm no longer going to have my day job, you know, can make good six figures cutting hair, but I have to do it. You know, it's like, I have to take that leap of faith and do it. And I'm blessed and happy that I am. And being in front of a group of, um, you know, men and women here that um have the same purpose and I and we're learning from each other. So it brings me to introduce Doug, <laughs> my guy, Doug here. Antalan, he's the new guy. Um, I wanted to um bring him on board because he was started with um well was, he was my barber he's my barber client I was getting in his ear talking about IULs and then of course he, he got in touch with somebody from WFG that of, of course was they had the right body parts let's put it that way so he decided to re get a policy through her right because she's hot <laughs> yeah says Doug I've been talking to you about this the entire time you know I'm teaching you about IULs so anyways he canceled the IUL he left WFG he got recruited. And I said, for about a year, I was in his ear. I said, hey, I want you to meet these guys in Insurance Pro Shop. If you're going to do anything with this business, join this group, get on their webinars, $40 a month. You know, I'm not trying to pitch what Jeremy does, but I'm saying as a new advisor, agent coming in on board, you're going to eliminate half the headache that I went through. I just, I've been 13 years in this business. You can shrink it down to, I want to say half or even shorter than that, just to be successful. So I brought him on board and, you know, um. He's gonna join once you get the link and all that, Jeremy. But I wanted just to guys introduce Doug. He's uh he works as a, a service assistant at Four Seasons, but he's his goal is to want to be um become a, an advisor like us. And he's only twenty six, I think, so he's got time. So Absolutely. welcome, Doug. Welcome, Doug. Glad, glad to have you here. Absolutely. He's trying to figure everything with Zoom, so it's kind of new to him everything. So this is like. <laughs> He was the guy talking, so just bear with him. He's just getting every. He's like yeah, very ready. I muted his mic because it was. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, he wants to stay high. I, I just asked him on mute, so hopefully. He okay, did. okay. Go ahead, Doug. Try to unmute there. All right. If you can. There we go. There you uh, go. Test, 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 yeah, test. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name's Doug. Yeah, that's uh, Uncle Darrell over there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Calls me Uncle Daryl. <laughs> so that's how we do it in I Hawaii. It. I love it. It's a respect thing in island culture for sure. So you know, um, anyway, you know, I, I'm just very happy. I'm very humble to you know have Uncle Daryl's you know his support, his guidance. You know, to you know, I've seen his Instagram posts in the past. You know, I guess the best way I could put it, I feel safe with you guys. You guys seem very, you guys don't mess around. So you know, <laughs> I feel very content with that and at ease. And you know, I'm. I'm here. If you know, if this is the route God led me to, this is what I'm happy with. So, I'm looking forward to you know more learning and all that. So, there's a lot you know. to learn, and and we'll be throwing it at you uh, hard and fast some days, and this will keep you keep you up, uh, get you as fast going as fast as possible. We were texting each other, and I I told him it's not going to be like your typical real financial group meeting. So just it's it's different, yeah. but he loves it. He likes. It's he's got a lot yeah. out of it. It was great yeah. that. Um, Jennifer and, and, and Ray were talking about being focused on, on a niche market, what we're doing. And we all have done it. I've done it. I told Doug, look at, I've tried final expense. I've done Medicare sales and I was here and there successful in some of it, but I realized it's so true. Like David Kinner puts it out there, the tax exempt guy, you have to really put it out there, what you're about. I can't be the barber, Medicare, final expense, you know, infinite banking guy. I just got to be focused in one area. And that's what I've learned about this business. We're all doing that. I mean, it's, it's a, Talking about the credit we were talking about earlier, I didn't get to chime in on it, but I went through the same thing, learning about the cre credit consolidation. And, you know, it was it was a lot of money that I'd spent on it. As mm -hmm. me and my ex-wife went through helping her with her business, racked up a lot of credit cards. But I'm, it was it was it's nice to show Doug, like in the business, there are struggles with it and, and it'll happen, Doug. So that's why being yeah. with a group of, of, of advisors here, they'll help you guide you in that right direction, because we will spend a lot of money on software marketing things and there's we're getting as much as you're selling the client you're going to get sold a lot of shiny objects and how to do be better in this business i'm going to spend thousands of dollars I and mean, yeah. you're not there yet but like what david kenner said if you get a chance the professionals forums i'm going to be there i'm glad we got on to david because man that price went up in price it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> like it's like double the price and then i'm going to finally get to meet jeremy's going to be there so you're yeah. going to be with a group of, of advisors and you'll notice that you'll start to level up and you just got to distract all the noise. It's just like what David said, Absolutely. I always used to complain about the multi-level marketing guys. And then they are the guys yeah. who taught me just, you need to focus on sowing the seeds. You're over here focusing on all that. The birds making all the noise. You got to stay focused. So you learn a lot from here. And, and it's not only for the uh, the business side, but personal development too. You'll get a lot out of that. We're all still learning, by the way, Daryl. Remember my, my, uh, I came into that. 
What yep. was my uh, my URL? It was socialsecuritymillionaire.com a couple of years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I was advised that's going to limit you. And based mm -hmm. on everything I've been learning and such, like, okay, I, I had to, and I think it was also a test to see if I would follow this guy's advice. So, um, so I followed, followed suit on that and I dropped that moniker. I dropped that URL. I'm sure it's available to be bought if someone really wants it, but <laughs> for, for the market I'm working at, it, it needs to be more wealth focused as opposed yep. to social security. Granted, there's people that have millions that are concerned about the social security, but there's a higher market than even that. So I didn't want to limit myself based on everything that I've been learning. So Absolutely. we'll take that for what it's worth. So Daryl, hey, I, I did a little bit of rebranding too. And that moniker, that one might not stay. We'll see. Um, I just came up with that and I secured both of the URLs. I got taxexemptwealthguy.com and the taxexemptwealthguy.com. I haven't done anything with them yet, but they're mine. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. <laughs> I hear you, man. Hey, it's Jeremy, a challenge to be able to marketing. Go ahead, Go ahead Lonnie. Lonnie. Jeremy, you, Jeremy, you had that. I'm sorry to interrupt there. All there. Um, good, but Lonnie. anyway, Jeremy, you, you you had that book on your website by Mr. Gray, the nine page book. Albert oh, Ian Gray. The, it's a PDF. He, I could get yeah. that link for you. No, <clears throat> well, I read it again last night. And it's, again, it's all about being focused. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, the common, den common denominator of success great that's it and then Smart i met lonnie i remember meeting you lonnie what, almost 10 years ago in one of the fmos and it's kind of weird i would connect it over here again so um you're going to connect with people in this industry um doug that's really serious about this business and not just about trying to hype it uh, everything up about recruiting you're going to see a difference very different but you're going to cut all the noise out and you're going to be focused on this and and this is the way we do it most of these agents here advisors are all independent so there's none of this recruiting going on you're not going to hear Jeremy or anybody here recruit you. It's going to be just straight to the point, um, get to the meat of it all and, and be successful in this business. And what I like about this is we're, we, Jeremy could be cutting it off if he wanted to. I've been on some Zooms where they're like right at 11, they're done or an hour's done. He, yeah. he gives us the opportunity to talk more. It's nice. And I'm sure he's got a lot of things to do, but it's, just, it's nice that you become like part of a family here. It's not so corporate type of setting. Yeah. yeah. Not the stuffy sales yeah. meetings that, Again, I, I started business when I was 17, starting this business. Um, oh, yeah. Can you can you share your history? So, I mean, just a little bit about yeah, your background. So, That's what I wanted to do. So, I started business when I was 17, worked with my dad, who had, we ran a large IMO at MetLife. Uh, we had 2,000 agents at one point. Uh, in 1999, we started the insurance program as a joke, uh, where, you know, one of the agents I had coming in, Donald Zaber, was saying, hey, you know, you guys are kind of my my father and my, my grandmother and grandfather passed away 98 99 okay so me and lou were both kind of burnt out recruiting agents we had 2000 plus of them and don's like you sell your stuff online so we we bought a domain name called insurance pro shop i'm a bowler dad plays tennis you know to always always the damn pro shop of all things uh spending more money so he said insurance pro shop they have some fun with it we started selling a prospecting system uh, for two thousand dollars a pop, we sold out in the first week, uh, and we started. And our credit card shut us off. They said, "No more. You're selling too much, too fast. You can't. We can't keep let you do this. We have no history." Great. Okay. So we started a ten dollar month resource center, which is now the insurance marketing and sales resource, which has grown to forty dollars a month. It was, up, it was about a hundred a couple of years. It was a hundred dollars a month. I uh, reset it back then, but basically, you know, I focus on teaching agents that's all i focus on i don't recruit anymore i don't um i'm out in the field when i have time but i spend majority of my time training agents building building and creating new materials concepts new conversations to help agents succeed all right because one of the things i learned very early on in my business my practice when i got that's not like i was 17 got my license at 19 and struggled mightily for the first three or four years five years I couldn't listen to my dad. You know, I was stubborn. I was, was not going to listen to my dad. He's a top producer. Let's not listen to him. That, that would make too much sense. So I, I failed miserably. So it took me a couple of years before I finally clicked in that, hey, dad knows what he's talking about. And it's all about asking questions. And when I learned that, my business skyrocketed. Both my personal sales, my recruiting, everything I was doing changed. Relationships, everything. That's where we are today. The help that that way you want to, Daryl. <laughs> kind of a nutshell. 
I didn't know that you guys started off as a joke in the pro it shop. Started as a joke. I... Started as a joke. <laughs> just to kind of. A, well, now know, I understand the pro shop because I know people that golf and goes, oh, okay, that's why you got the pro shop in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I was I was a bowler. I was semi pro bowler when I was younger. I traveled on the East Coast nice. in tournaments. I still bowl today. But uh, yeah, so I, it was one of those things. We were sitting in his office talking to Don, and you know, we had just bought our IMO a, a website. This is back in 1998. We bought that website for IAIG Online, which is our recruiting website. Um, and we we're talking about it, just spitballing ideas. And I had just bought a new bowling ball at the pro shop like two days before. Yeah, I spent more money than I should have on bowling balls. I had 30 bowling balls at one point. Um, it was craziness uh, when I was touring and stuff. Um, but yeah, so the, the pro shop. your passion. That. Yeah. That was my passion way back, yes. <laughs> and Jennifer, you mentioned something about passion, um, about focusing on one thing, right? And it's kind of like the barbering. I've been doing it for 30 years. I wasn't a hairstylist. I didn't do hair colors. It was just a barber with tra traditional barbering. And, and, and it, it took a while to get there, but now where I'm at, I'm like trying to move people off my list and get them off. And it's hard. Doug's one of my clients, but he's going to be one of my clients for, because I'm going to help train him and, and guide him in this business. But I'm really cutting back on a lot of guys. But when you become that hyper-focused on just one part of the business, you're going to be known as that guy. And it's like constantly getting hit up. So I just got to transfer that into the financial, what we're doing and not, not get caught up in everything else. It's all the noise and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, maybe you could touch on. Go ahead, Jer what was that, Jennifer? I was say, let me ask you something because one of my agents is doing something similar. So he's he's been um, uh, he does bathroom remodeling and he's okay. done really 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 well. But he doesn't want to do it at all anymore. He's found that he makes a whole lot more money in insurance and he loves doing it right. And so the problem is with him, and maybe you can answer this or someone else. But um, the problem is he has such a huge word of mouth referral system for his contracting jobs mm -hmm. that he keeps getting called every day. Can you help? Can you do this bathroom model? Can you do this bathroom model? What are you doing? What are you going to do about your barbershop things? You're going to, you're going to get that too. Yeah. So what I'm doing is, is um, I'm having, I'm for one, I'm not marketing anymore. That's one thing. And I'm talking about it, letting people know that I'm moving on. And and as people hear it, it's kind of like, it hurts because you built, I'm barbering. You I've built solid relationships um, but it's like really being intentional and in where I want to be at. I mean, I didn't even, Doug doesn't have to hear this, but I didn't even renew my barber license this year. I said, I'm not renewing it. Basically just being like setting it that I'm like not going to renew the dang thing. Just letting you know that I can't cut hair. Legally, I can't, I'm not I'm supposed to be licensed. And, and it's just really being intentional with that. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's not, it's just creating that image. You're just like the guy with the bathroom remodel. I'm constantly getting referrals left and right. And the reason is because I'm promoting it out there. You know, if you're promoting what you do out there, people just look at you as like, okay, he's the guy that's the barber, but he does financial stuff. Now that I eliminate that, got rid of the financial barber brand. It's just my, my, my monogram that's behind me. That's, and I don't talk about it. Even on social media, I used to talk about it, about the business. Cause my goal was to try to work with the barber industry and become their advisor. Mm -hmm. But barbers are like tattoo artists. They're like, irresponsible with their money it's a stereotype but they just spend their money here in hawaii gold chains nice lifted trucks i mean they spend a lot of money on useless crap tattoos and i realized that the barber industry is not my my market it's the business owner because the business owner that owns a barber shop i realized i'm helping them and then they're like the younger guys they're not there they're not the smartest guys they hit to down on my industry but you got to figure from high school they didn't want to go to college or get a career they said i'm going to be a barber and that's like the easy way out and then you can make good money now as a so I had to just really just avoid like not even involving in any barber activities. Even if I get invited to like an event, I just don't go. It's like, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So you have to just almost like, you said I don't want to say the word kill. You have, to, you have to kill, cut that entire like brand of who you are. Because I was telling my, my neighbor who's a pastor, he used to be a pastor and he used to be a performer. He opened up for Don Ho back in the day. He's 80 years old. And he was in this musician world type of life. And then he went to California to, to perform. And then he became a reborn again Christian and became a pastor. So I was telling him, it's kind of like you being a pastor. You're not going to say you're like the rock star pastor. You're going to be like just the pastor. He basically cut out his entire life as a musician. And I'm basically doing that. He, have to just, his, he has to stop even hanging out with his construction guys pretty much. Because if you're around them, everybody still knows you as that contractor, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So I basically just, I'm not even involved in any of the activities with barbering. Um, if people ask me, I say, yeah, I don't know, I'm not the guy to ask. Maybe you should reach out to this guy. Um, it's just everything I'm doing is just based this 2024. I just told myself, I'm just going to be only talking about what we do in the financial service insurance industry. And that's it. And I'm not going to even, if anybody asks me like, Hey, Daryl, what do you think about this haircut? How do I don't know. You got to talk to somebody else. I mean, I know, but I'm not going to even answer it. Like talk to another guy. So it, really it's good. a, it's, a, really it's kind of like a sad breakup in a way. It's like a breakup, right? When you break up with a relationship, you don't just forget about the person, but eventually they'll just kind of fade away. Yeah. Thank goodness well, for Doug. He's going to die. He's going to train to be an advisor. I said, well, we can cut hair. I can teach you, but just don't tell anybody. I basically told my friends, don't introduce me as your barber. When we're out there, just say, hey, it's my friend or here's my financial advisor or whatever. If you mention a barber, I will cut your line. And you're not cutting your hair no more. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you're doing is you, what you're doing is you're saying no to what is no longer important to you. So you can say yes Correct. to what is important to you. That's the important thing. So uh, unfortunately, it's the inverse yes. You're telling people no so that you can say yes to what's important. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's not saying no that I don't want, I don't care about you guys. It's no because I'm moving in a different direction. I'm going to be 50 years old this year. I was like, I'm not, I don't want to be cutting hair till I'm 60. I got to cut the line already. <laughs> but but definitely tell people what you're doing. And I don't know if I can help you in this manner. Yeah. But this is the the, the direction I'm taking my professional career. That kind of yeah. thing. So I would definitely, you know, so guys doing bathroom remodeling, the same standard of care yeah. that I've been doing here. I'm going to I bring to my new clients in this field here. So I Perfect. would transition and pivot that conversation. So that maybe there's a way that they can at least have the conversation. Better to have a conversation than just shoot it all down. Um, yeah, exactly. And then, and then what helps is like the, it, w things like, for example, the um, RFC, for example, that's helped me out tremendously to have the RFC because people see that. And then I've been promoting it. So a lot of guys are like, okay, on the card, they see registered financial consultant and then they look at me differently in the light of that, as opposed to like, oh, he's just an insurance guy. So that helps out a lot. It's really grown my practice. I'm grateful that I saw this from you guys. And, and, and like, maybe you can share um, any of you guys about with Doug, because of course, Doug's only seen the recruiting side, maybe Jeremy can explain what it was like to really manage an agency because they're pitching him like, oh, you need to build your own business, build your own agency because that's where you make money. And I said, it's not exactly what it is. So maybe Jeremy could touch on what it's like to own an agency and manage that entire headache. <laughs> it's pure hell. Um, <laughs> you know, talk about, you know, any kind of job you have, you always have a lot of personalities you got to deal with. In the insurance industry, you got to realize that, you know, when I was on the IMO, 80% of the agents I had were probably dead weight, right? 20% did all the business and 20% did the bulk. So out of the 2,000, I might have had 30 to 50 that were actually doing any sizable amount of business, all right? And then managing all those personalities. Yes, I made tremendous amount of money running the agency but the stress that it was under i have no hair for a reason um same thing with lou same thing with alex we all have no hair now you know and it's not just we, some of it's genetic some of it's just the pure stress involved so again if i starting a small agency is different than running a large agency but until you can get yourself up and running and producing yourself it's hard to recruit to because if you have you all heard this, the, the, the cliche statement, the blind leading the blind. And that's what probably the majority of agencies are right now. Some guy that had a little bit of success, you see had, you know, with one of the big IMOs, this guy did have a, you know, a 10,000 a month. Oh, we should all follow him. He's going to be the new sales manager. And he can't duplicate it. And he can't train on it or tell you how he did it. It's the same basic thing. So, the reason I started the program was to be that built the fill that gap to be I, I can transfer my knowledge of what I did when I was successful, what Lou did when he was successful, and transfer it to agents and help duplicate it to make you successful. And then as they get down the path, if you choose to recruit, I, I God bless you, good luck, have fun with it. Um, but it's not necessary. It really isn't. I it's mean, kind it, of sold wrong, Doug. I mean, I know. WFG puts it out there, but I always compare it to my industry. It's like, as a barber, you're never going to open up your barbershop or a hairstylist when you're just starting. You have to build clientele, learn how to crawl, walk before you do it. And then 
you know, you don't just open up a shop and do that. And it's just like an agency. When I hear WFG and all these PFA guys say, oh, I want to own my own agency. I'm like, man, they have no idea of understanding of what we're even talking about. And um, another thing here with, with this group here, there's not going to be this IUL versus whole life. They're very open to like a lot, what whatever's good for the client. So they're very straightforward. They're not going to just pull you to the whole life side or IUL side. So you we, get- We did that two months ask. ago. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. I missed that one between you guys with the whole life. That was a good involved. one. That was it a was. really good it. one. Yeah. <laughs> that one should be made public, quite frankly, but that's okay. Uh yeah. And then now, if you get now, a chance, Doug, check out Doug's um, I mean David Kinder's YouTube channel. I'll share it with you later. You're gonna learn a lot of stuff on there. Um, the link that he shared, go on there, join the Facebook group. But you're gonna start in, in a good place. I wish I had this type, I wish I learned this. I think it was in 2018. I jumped on. And and I was like already in the business for like seven years, and then it took me a while to get going with IPS. But once I started doing it, it got the the groove of it. And I start I don't I don't miss it unless I have a meeting. I'll miss it. Um, but it's like they have a plethora of like trainings on their site. I mean, you don't have to like don't. It's so different from what you've seen from WFG. It's gonna be different. Well, and if I may, I now I have never been in a recruiting situation in the insurance industry. Now I do direct agents to different places. So I'm in a different position uh, for doing that. But if I may, I, I look at it this way and I compare it to one particular company we haven't talked about yet, but that's okay. That's not mentioned them. They're curse words anyway. But <laughs> um, let's suppose you got a hundred agents and let's suppose that they do their own company average, which is sell one policy a year. And let's suppose that policy is a thousand bucks. So a hundred people also sell a thousand dollars. So that's a hundred thousand dollars of volume. What are you going to get out of that? Maybe 10% maybe 20. I don't know what the payout is. Let's assume 10%. You did all that work to get $10,000 for the year. In the insurance industry, you learned how to work, sell a fixed index annuity. You sell a $500,000 fixed index annuity, get 7% of that. You're going to get 35,000. This is an industry where 1% of 100 people's efforts sucks. And I'd much rather have 100% of my own and continue to develop myself and grow from there. So yep. that- that's just me. Um, that's the way I put it out there. You learn how to solve bigger problems. You're going to be paid commensurately for doing exactly that. And believe me, what right. I said, 35000 that's not the biggest possible commissions out there. Um, not by a long shot. But you got to get rolling with something in order to, to then build and grow and uh, build a foundation on, on yeah. top of that. So, Well, the overall yeah. can be significant, too. But again, there's, there's a flip side of that. You know, I, I tell a story, you know, frequently. Um you know, when I was running the IMO, I had a, an agent who I thought was reputable, who was out selling policies, had a couple of different agents in this, over this course of my years, um, that had the client had her assets seized by the IRS, which then lapsed the policy. A little over 157000 in commissions I had to pay back because it rolls up line to the top agent and it sucks. You know, and they, or you have people that have, you know, I had a lady who had started a gambling ring with gypsies. Great marketing idea. I, I love the idea of it. Legal, <laughs> legality? No, she's brilliant for starting it. So they would find the elder of the gypsy clan. They'd write a policy on this person who couldn't read, write, all they signed the policy with an X. And the fans would take turns paying the premiums each month. Whichever pre person paid the premium that month that the client died, Won the lottery. Oh my gosh. For real. Oh. All right. I didn't know this was going on until after the fact. I, I, I questioned all these Paul's sign with X's and all these older people, you know, 75, 80 people, you know, writing these big policies. But she's my top producer. So I give her leeway. She's number one in my in my agency. She's making me thousands of dollars. I had to pay all of it back when the policies are already send it, you know. Have you know it, it's it's it sounds great having people do the work for you, but in the end, it's not worth the aggravation and the the the, the legality and liability you have. Well, that's worse than kiting checks. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lady yeah. called the Black Widow in Florida. Her and the agent were, you know, this lady was a cop down in Palm Beach County, been married four times. All four of her previous husbands died. 
and I turned the TV one more in my office. We had the TV to the weather channel. I was turning on the, the, the news channel and I see my agent in handcuffs <laughs> because he was writing all the policies. They were lovers together and they were cashing the checks together. And then what were they murdering the? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're hearing, do you hear a different that, side yeah. of it? Yeah. There's there's tons of stories I can tell you. <laughs> All right, so Jeremy, go back, go back to that first one with the IRS, because I don't understand how that money got taken out of your pocket. Yeah. So they, they the IRS seized all our assets. Uh, all the, the policy to be, the, the, the lady was, was evading tons of taxes. So they rescinded the policy per the IRS request the client's money back to the government so they could freeze our assets which they already paid commissions out so the agent defaulted the other rga defaulted and it fell to me to pay 157 thousand in commissions and how long had the policy been on the books uh it was on the books 13 or 14 months so not two years yet not two years mm -hmm. and wow. so you had to pay it all mm -hmm. it all fell up to me me and lou so, so Doug, uh, those are horror stories. Uh, but Jake okay. in the comments asked yeah. if he could ask a question there. So I don't want to yeah. absolutely go ahead. Right. Well, this will be our last question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, great. Hi. Uh, thanks for uh, making space. This has been a fun discussion, and I've only been here for a part of it uh, because I had to log off for another call. Um, I got a call from these Valpac people mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, I don't know if you know what it is, but it's, it's, you get an envelope with a bunch of coupons in it and it's three and a half cents a door uh, to send it out, you know, to, and they, they have like 20,000 doors in my area. So I was thinking about doing that. It's, uh, it, it's, um, so basically it's seven hundred dollars a month, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so I was thinking, and you can print both sides. So I was thinking of doing tax return on, on one side and uh, a retirement planning thing on the other side. And you know, just probably either a free report or or uh, some questions that are thought provoking, like. Can you retire now? Ask me how. 